Well gone family, family. <laughs> yes, we're on here again. This time we're just having a conversation though, right? So I've invited my good friend and fellow reggae artist, Kabaka Pyramid, to come online and talk with me about two things that we both are big advocates for, yeah? And that is Ganja and Web3, yeah? Meaning cryptocurrency, meaning moving into the future. <laughs> so we're just waiting on Kabaka to join us so that we can start this conversation. Greetings. So we'll just go and bless other people in the meantime. No breath work today. You can all relax. But I hope those of you who do the breath work are actually on your, you know, practice. Making sure you're getting in that pranayama. Getting high off your own supply. As we draw nearer to 420, you know, everybody's thinking about herb now and herb product and new events and all different kind of things to get the people involved in the ganja vibration. So we just want to have a conversation where we kind of help some people to prepare so they don't overdo it when the time comes, you know? And they still find that balance, whether they're in the real world or in the web space. So yeah, how is everybody doing? Where are we tuning in from? Where are you all tuning in from? What up, uh, Kenya in the house, always. Big up Kenya, every time. Chicago cultivation, cultivation. I hope that sounds good. We love the farmer. Big up all the farmer, them every time. Hope we're not growing it organically. <laughs> Permaculture, we say. Oh, from your sofa, Nick and Ella, my twinnies. From Tanzania, blessed love, whether that's Switzerland, UK. Big up. Nikki, hi. You were thinking about me? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, man, big up everybody present. How on the feeling? What's going on? Everybody good? Columbus, Ohio in the house. Big up, big up, big up, big up. Where Kabaka? The Kabaka going like him. Like him, I try to take long with the thing, you know. Somebody go wake up Kabaka there for me. <laughs> Nikki, message Kabaka and tell him for Oreo. Washington, big up in the house. Impressive by Edwina. Allergies have you up. So you don't know what to deal with the allergies, man. You get a big bucket of hot water and you get some mentholated crystals and some peppermint and thing and just free up the sinuses. Or you do some pranayama. Yeah, watch that video that we did last um, was it yesterday we were online with it? Yeah. We have a pranayama video up right now. When you finish with that, no more sinus issue. <laughs> Everything free up. Check it out. Kabaka in here. That's a question or that's a, 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 a comment. <laughs> Show yourself, P. Oh, see you then. I'll check my request. No, no, no. So. There you go. Good. Greetings. Bless and love. welcome. <clears throat> How Bless up the people. You know, you need a few minutes to just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a blast some some Indian food, you know. Some dal. Okay. What's some on the food? menu? Some dal, but them forgive me brown rice, but them not give me. Them give me some naan. So I forgot, I forgot complain to Uber Eats. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, all man. right. All right. All right. Well, it's good to see you. Your face looking round like mine. Well, yeah, all right. No. I forgot to start some, some rigorous <laughs> exercise program called <laughs> The Toy Life. Uh, uh, but, but good to see yes, you. How, how far along are you now? This way you go. <laughs> oh, far, far, far along. <laughs> yeah, no, full <laughs> guts, full guts. Go, like four weeks to go. Like Okay. That's a go on, all right? Not so much weight except for this, you know? Nice little pumpkin in my belly, but lovely. It's very, very exciting, terrifying, and exciting. <laughs> so, go. Mm -hmm. so, tell me now. So, we're on here, and today we want to kind of bring some attention to two things that we, we two of the many things we have in common. Yeah, one yeah. of them being appreciation for Ganja. And another being an appreciation for the developments in this Web3 space, right? Particularly certain currency and so on. And you know, wherever there is ignorance about a thing, there's going to be fear of the thing. And some people would just rather just, you know, dwell in the fear aspect of it rather than go explore what is possible when knowledge is applied. So I just wanted to hear from you. I'm going to start off with Ganja because obviously right so i have a i i wanted to hear from you now right i don't know how much of your business you're going to tell the people let me know because the people might have an impression of kabaka because of the songs and album titles but are you ready to share with the people the honest truth about your relationship with the sacred ganja plant huh tell nice. talk to just take it easy and you know, you have the guns blazing. We just start the live, you know. All right. <laughs> start, start from, start from, give us, give us your first introduction. What was your first introduction to? Okay. Well, I start, I start Bonner smoking it. Um, I was probably around 15. You know, me and I'm a bridging them start around the same time and it was an amazing transformation for me, like the mental, the mental aspect of it. I just remember just being able to go layers deep into my thought process about every little thing, you know? And it's like, you just find yourself in deep thought and then you, you're pre in the thoughts and you're pre in the facts that you're thinking and you're pre in how, you know, you know, normally think about things in this way. And but just remember as well as a young you too, like, I remember colors seeming more vivid too. Like when me used to burn her. You know, that was always an interesting thing to me. And um, yeah, it was around the time when I, I started my Rastafari journey too. So, you know, where I burn her and where I listen to Oli Sizzla. And, you know, it's like my whole Catch. life was at that time. Yeah, you know, I start to read about His Majesty and Kebra Negas and all of them kind of thing. And it, the, the you know, my, my musical journey, my, Ganja journey, my Rastafari journey was all tied together. You know, so it was an amazing thing to see. And, you know, we end up there amongst enough elder Ras and thing and go up enough chalice base and they just take a, a liking to as a chalice thing. You know, even even Yui days when we there are Yui and we're there around at Taylor by Kadama with knife and we are learning how to build steam chalice and all them things from early. <laughs> you know, enough what's kind of catch on to the steam. I don't know what people them when they say chalice, you know, when Kabaka is talking about chalice, right? You have chalice and you have chalice. Please distinguish but between them. What I tell you now is that may I get into car. Yeah. Even the time that when we when just start sight up the steam as them, it's like that they new to it because I'm more, you know, like bun chalice we I deal with. You know, like when you talk about in an inner yard, you know, it's like, you know, we, we learn for Bill Kochi and we take the, the, the glass Babel buckle them and the, 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 the file and just pick at it for about 20 minutes until you get the little hole them and then you use a little pipe and then you, you use a radiator hose in it and 
you know, the Babel buckle cover and all of them things, and you, you get your clay cut you and put it on it. And that's how we used to build chalice, or like calabash and, and coconut and, and all of them things that we use and build with chalice. And, you know, but we are smoke. And them time, they know, maybe kind of take a liking to how, how, how the herb bun with the grabber leaf still. I, mean, I tell a lie. It's like, just the, the it, it kind of gives you a lighter experience. So it's like you're able to consume a whole leaf more. <laughs> it's like more time when we burn the ital chalice, it's it dense, it very dense. So like you feel it now your chest. What you say? Pick up head. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Now, remember, remember a, a funny experience. Cause I remember when they did have that Rastafari gathering at UAE and all the, the elders them from all the different islands and things did come. Um, they come at UA and forward for the for the gathering and remember no for them was staying and I believe it was Rex Nettleford Hall and um Caleb hey. forward with some Caleb forward with some fresh lime green herb from Senti. And wow. the elder them dead in and we forward now and you know me bring my chalice and thing and cutting board and the elder them say, Yeah man, they must sip up some chalice. The man here in them sixties and seventies and fifties and them something. You know. So we say, all right, how you want to prepare it? You want to put like a grabber, you want to, you know, seal it up. I tell, man, them say, I tell, man, we don't use them thing there. So we said, for the sure. <laughs> we ask them, we ask them, we're sure about it. Man, them say, yes, man, I saw we born with chalice. We say, all right, I remember say, I had some fresh weed, I know, cure weed, you know, some fresh herb, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to spice up the chalice, you know, with that one big, one of them big round table there, but it's not round like, what you call it now? Um, rectangular table there. And okay. me up on one end and Caleb up on the next end and all the elder them seat up round it. So me, me, me chef up the, 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 the spice and thing and, you know, I tell, load up the chalice, light it and send it go round. I said, by the time the chalice reach me forward, you know, every elder take up themselves from the table and guard it up. <laughs> oh. And me and Caleb and load up and guard some guy go sleep. Yeah. yeah, it is serious. I we sit down there and burn up the chalice for self. But the idle thing, better, you esteem, like... better esteem it, car. <laughs> and then the thing is, you know, you see, if you the burn chalice, when, when, and this is my observation, kind of a really tech to the burn chalice. I think I burn a chalice one time. And yeah. because my lungs are very, 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 like, highly developed. When them put that in my hand, I said, taste this now. I'm applying my chalice, my steam chalice lungs. <laughs> Wap it. And it's not. You can try to exhale that you really understand the damage you have done yep. to your It's and serious. I said, it's serious. My lungs, brother. And that was the first and last pull of a bun chalice I ever take. Let me tell you. I <laughs> depend on some, some chalice yard. I bun grab a chalice from morning till night. I kid you not. I may mean, I talk a couple, a years, couple of years. We are, we are use like 30% grabber, but we, you know, we get some nice grabber. You know, you get the <laughs> you get the nice tobacco and thing and 30% hot. When man forward from the chalice oh. and bun that whole sweat take them and them faint and all them things. <laughs> yeah. And nobody na I open the cooking food at the same time, you know, because you have enough grab a yard with man a bun chalice and a bun chalice and a lean up. No so rehydrate, stretching a little bun chalice till them lean up. When we usually go around a 219, man, round a fresh them. We have like some big mango tree in the yard. So we just bun chalice and then go pick mango, climb tree and pick mango and them something there. And, and food a spice same way and thing, but it was so to. funny because, hold on. I'm saying you have to. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. But the thing is, you know, it's so funny because enough people would have it say, you know, spliff is a thing where, you know, you just burn spliff regular. Spliff now go really like frost ya yeah, for not, but more chalice now that I go, you know, lick your heaven in certain way. But for we, it was like the opposite. It's like once you really season as, as a chalice smoker, it's like, you just a bun chalice and you just dip on one plane right throughout the day. 
And then no more time, I take a little break and every man roll up them spliff now and it's them time you see man <laughs> start moving like them nice, you know, you know? It's an it's a interesting thing still, but... And it's a culture of consistent ganja use. So, like, it not really promote productivity, so to speak. It promote yeah. money, you know? Yeah, that... And it's a communal thing. It is a... It does have a sacredness to it because it does no, bring people sure. together. No, we are. To bring people together. Ganja so is one of their way. When you, you know what I mean? It's not like a hard drugs experience. It's really no. like people are doing it together. The whole process of cutting it up on the board, the That's right what, amount of water. So. Like you get addicted to the whole act of preparation, the ritual it's of it. Ritual. You know? That's the word. That's the word I would use. Because all right, when, when them time, you know. When we are born the fire hot in and nobody can tell you nothing about no Bible or no God or no Jesus or nothing, you know. It's, it's like a chalice, our prayer. When we are, you know what I mean? When we are salute his majesty and empress men and, and heat here and water and sun, moon and stars and all of them things. When we are blessed up with chalice or heights up because we're not blessed, we're not be less. Uh, everything we are born them time. Homology <laughs> of every word. Yeah. Remember, remember we, 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 we are sip up some chalice with an elder one time. And a man say, man, a, a man a bless the chalice in and the man a watch him in. Elder a watch him in and the man say, highly I. So, man say, which highly I? Highly still the first. <laughs> the, man say, the man say, oh, no mistake, no error. When you bless up your chalice, when you heights up your chalice, is like a different, different order within itself. And I feel like. I feel like that is a powerful thing with Rastafari. Cause when you when you check all um spiritual traditions around the planet, like right now I watch a series for Netflix called Resurrection Air to Gold, where it's like a Turkish, it's like the Muslims them, the Turkish Muslim them are fight against the Knights Templars them and the Christian Crusaders and thing. And everything them do is based off a of discipline and ritual and the way how you step into a room and greet the elder is a specific way and you, you have to ask permission for do certain things. And it's like when Sizzler say, when you side the turban, take off your thumbs them and greet, take off your caps them and greet, you know? And them things that mean love and they, they attract it to Rastafari, right? you know, the discipline and the liberty of it. Where sometimes now it just become a thing where you put locks by your head, you, you know what I mean? You do certain little thing and then you say it's Rasta, but... Like there's there there's supposed to be an initiation aspect to, to all traditions where you have to qualify and you have to know the laws and the rules and all of them thing and you know well you know Rastafari is beautiful in that there's a free spirit aspect to it still and no writs and rights and ones will say things like that still you know it's just a natural kind of liberty but at the same time for you to pass on tradition there have to be order you know all right agreed. And those are some of the beautiful things that I found with Rastafari when I was also introduced to it. Because I wasn't introduced to, I was introduced to his majesty, to, you know, to the king, his autobiography, his words. And that is what inspired me to go and say, let me go and seek out these people who are already having a relationship with him. For yeah. Sure. Was on the, on the face of it, there was some beautiful experiences and the opportunity to see people like living in such a such a uh, what is the word reverent way exactly because, because it's the individuals that i met you know so like kalamawe and his personal rituals uh, mm -hmm. Ibo, personal rituals and other elders who I met who their personal rituals were so beautiful to me. The way they, you know, from uprising roots, like these people yeah. embody a particular of discipline and I watched the peace that they were able to cultivate in themselves. So That's it's it. not so this very warring kind of energy that is there to, and that militants comes from a history of having to be militant against the system. Exactly. We know living the system has the system is different. Things have changed. You there isn't as much to be fighting for. The victory is won. Really and truly the victory is won. And if you want to live in a way where you know you're going to constantly deify your oppressor, 
because you need something to fight for rather than surrendering to the fact that the victory is won and you have an opportunity to, to be anything you want to be Definitely. and to turn into that into that um space of abundance and there is no longer an oppressor and you can do anything and be anything we are if we are not willing to now shift the paradigm and we want to stay in that space. Like everything has its time and place. There was a time when Rastafari needed to be a militant force. And now it needs to be more of a force for peace. It needs to be more of a force for rituals that restore rather than destroy. Yeah, and yeah, health, health and wellness, I think. You know, yeah. and that's what, that's what his majesty showed us because if you are following the teachings of the king, who was dubbed the Prince of Peace, yes? Okay. Then you have to how he operates, how he operates in the political space, how he operates with education and knowledge, how he operates with technology, how he operates with his one woman that he chose and stayed with and built a nation with. These are the things we have to follow. So I follow the king as an example because I see perfection in how he operates. And his ritual pulls back to peace always. His morning rituals, his daily rituals. Yeah? So these are the things now. So when we look at Ganja, we have to look at it in a medicinal way. And there's much to learn from traditions like Rastafari. Right? Even other religions as well have beautiful elements. And the mm. thing about religion is the purpose of it is supposed to reunite us with ourselves. Just like the practice of yoga is all about getting back to our, like finding that, that essence, that essential nature within ourselves. So if we are using substances or practices or whatever it is, and they're not reuniting us with ourselves, then they're detrimental because they're pulling us away from ourselves. And sometimes we end up in situations where over and over, we are repeating these very abusive cycles. So a beautiful thing like ganja, which is created now as medicine to restore the homeostasis in our body, ends up creating a, a, a false world that we live in. An escape that we escape now because we don't want to have to deal with real life, so we just stay high. We don't actually deal with the issues in our family, deal with the issues with your man or your woman, or deal with the issues, whatever they are. We just stay high so we don't have to think about them. And we run away into this space, and then, you know what I mean? And then when people tell us you're using too much herb, like that, you know, they're fighting against the herb. <laughs> that always creates imbalance, because once, once you do that, then you reach into an abusive cycle. And it's yeah. like, I, I found, even within myself, where, you know, that manifests, you know, into like a tangible thing with the herb, where... I start to develop like a sensitivity or an oversensitivity towards it where, you know, I look at it as, you know, something that's just a gentle reminder, like, yo, you, you kind of did abuse that thing a little bit still, you know? And that allowed me to kind of, you know, just like return to a balance within myself where I say, all right, I don't need the herb. I can use it if, if I need to, you know, enjoy an occasion or whatever and, and within a moderation. But you know, I think a lot of people too, you know, they maybe go through certain things with the herb, but because of, you know, we, we have this, we have this attitude like, like we need ganja, like we need it for, for our meditation or we need it for our mental state. And anytime you find it, say you need something external to yourself, then you're in a detrimental cycle. You know, and we know that herb is a natural plant that was given to us by the Most High. And to me, as as they I said, it 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 builds these connections. You know, at the end of the day, when we forward into you know these physical bodies, there's an aspect of our higher self that's detached from us because literally, our higher self can't operate within the low frequency vibration of of this planet, and and especially the environments we create for ourselves through karma. You know, so literally things like the herb and, and other plant medicine is what people use to reconnect with them higher self. But that reconnection is not necessarily a sustainable thing when you're using something external. It's only really through meditation and them thing you create a sustain. Exactly. So herbs, 
and plant medicine in general become necessary because where we have evolved to, that we are so separated from our true nature. And when we use these herbs, depending on how sophisticated the illusions we've built for ourselves, they can literally like truly rip us apart. And so that's now when you see people have mental breaks when they take plant medicine because they are so far removed from their actual self. They've built up, Wonder. you know what, to say this is the reality and I have to have my things and my do 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 do. And the moment now that you hit your brain and break those connections and start to reignite some old connections, your body going to shock. You literally going to shock. Anxiety take you over. And all of a sudden, herb is going to make, make you mad. You know? <laughs> You've been, you know what I'm saying? This is not the case all the time, but this is the case a lot of the times that I oh, see. And I'm going to go hospital them juke them and then start introducing other chemicals into the body and it's just a downward spiral all because we are not learning the importance of things like ritual in our life there's a point when yeah. you need ritual. there's some people who really need ritual they need to have experiences with physical things and outward things and outward reminders to do the internal work because True. if they don't Remind us they're not going to remember because of the nature of their life. And then there's some of us who don't need ritual. They, we've transcended the need for the ritual and religion and all of that because we've adopted a constant state of reverence and meditation. You remember that book that you sent me? That ebook with him again? Oh my gosh. Inner worlds. Oh yeah. Yeah. How, how to read how to read in our world. I remembered myself as a child. Like just the things that I lost in my adulthood and just remembering how close, how much closer we were to perfection as children, especially my generation, you know, <laughs> when who, we didn't really, <laughs> we never have the, the social media. We literally depended on our, on our imagination. And then especially here in Jamaica, in the country of the parts of Jamaica, where, you know, you have cable TV. So like literally you couldn't be bored. Like being bored was a, was a, was a, exciting thing it's like what am i going to go do now and you yeah. explore your environment and you can use the imagination like these kids today don't really have to use their imagination in the same way so their imaginations are applied to pre-existing things so they yes. innovate upon innovations rather than create from nothing I find it so much harder to do that and then you know the attention spans and all of this so now when you apply ganja to the the mix or like any mind refreshing or mind altering substance to the mix is that yeah. it becomes like a dangerous connection you know and especially for people who have addictive personalities already who have the tendency to become addicted with to people to things to food whatever it is they're particularly susceptible because if gadget ends up doing a positive thing for them they're gonna stay there they're not going to think, oh, this is a reminder of the state I need to be in. They're going to think this is the only way to that state. You know? And there's, the, there's something that I noticed because I feel like humanity is evolving towards, you know, we have been evolving towards a state where we're more cerebrally active. It's more a brain thing than a heart function. And the thing is, you know, we're disconnected from that, that heart consciousness, you know, that that third eye consciousness, then you could say as well, you know, and, and these, these plant medicines and things, they speak to the heart, they speak to this connection. And if we're disconnected from it, then we're going to be disconnected from the understanding of what's happening when we have these experiences and then we seem foreign to our consciousness because we are more mentally oriented. That's why I find that even in the same book you mentioned, How to Know the Higher Worlds, Rudolf Steiner, he's conscious of this, in when he's he's giving the exercises and the activities for us to do to open up our consciousness based on being in a mental type of era you know a lot of these medicines and these rituals and things they were developed for humanity in a different stage in evolution when we were less mentally oriented and and our heart centers were more open and these were the exercises and stuff that we needed at that time so a lot of times people doing these things and even I have had experiences with certain breathing techniques and things, you know, certain Indian breathing techniques. And it's like, when we do it, it's like a pure headache now for the next two days and all of them kind of things. So it's like, we have to know that 
each you know a lot of these cultures too you know is like the the every art every culture and every race develops certain types of bodies and the bodies are programmed towards what is needed for that race and that culture and that place on the planet so when you 